Hi, I'm Chad Drexler, and I'm a graduate student in the Department of Chemistry at Penn State, where I work for Paul Kramer. And this is my collaborator, Jocelyn. Hi, I'm Jocelyn Bertudis, a high school chemistry teacher from Gatorsburg High School in Maryland. Jocelyn and I have put together a lesson plan. This is aimed at teaching students about Hofmeister chemistry. It can be reasonably done in two or three 45-minute classroom sessions, and the teacher can modify it as they see fit. This is broken up into three parts. The first is an overview on ions and their hydration in water. The second is an introduction to the Hofmeister series. And the third part is a set of hands-on experiments and worksheets for the students to complete. The lesson plan incorporates three learning goals. The first is to introduce the students to the Hofmeister series. The second is to teach them how salts and ions that they learn about in their chemistry class can affect the behavior of proteins that they learn about in their biology classes. And finally, an overview of intermolecular interactions. Today we're going to tell you about something called the Hofmeister series. It's a ranking of ions based on their ability to precipitate proteins from aqueous solution. So ions on the left-hand side of the series are much better at salting out proteins than ions on the right-hand side of the series. The Hofmeister series is relevant in many aspects of life and in chemistry, from food chemistry and how pickles are made, to atmospheric chemistry, and even neurodegenerative diseases, such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease, all of which involve the misfolding of proteins in an aqueous solution. The lesson plan that we've designed utilizes cheap and readily available materials, such as egg whites, as our source of protein. This is interesting because Franz Hofmeister actually used this as his source of protein in the late 1800s, when initially performing these experiments. And so high school students can now perform simplified versions of his experiments. It only requires about four or five eggs to prepare samples for an entire class. A glass dish to whisk the eggs in, a beaker, an Erlenmeyer flask, a plastic funnel, a coffee filter, and four test tubes to prepare stock solutions in. Two salt solutions, one being sodium iodide and the other being sodium chloride, with the sodium iodide wrapped in aluminum foil because it's light sensitive. Distilled water, filtered egg white, and each group of students will have three test tubes. One will contain no salt, just filtered egg white and water, and the other two will contain salts either sodium iodide or sodium chloride. Now I will let Jocelyn describe the experiment to you. In doing this lab, you have to prepare the filtered egg white one day in advance. In doing this, you have to get some fresh eggs, make sure you wash and clean them, and then you need to separate the egg white from the yolk. Then take the egg white and whisk it. a fine foam like this. Then put it in a beaker so that the foam can settle overnight and then you put this in a refrigerator. Once it's allowed to settle overnight, then you're now ready to filter this using a coffee filter. This filtered egg white is now ready to be used for your experiment.
Now that you have prepared your filtered egg white, you're now ready to prepare your stock salt solution using distilled water. One 5 molar sodium iodide solution and one 5 molar sodium chloride solution. So you can prepare your samples by using the salt solution and filtered egg white either by choosing the one to three proportion from using salt solution to filtered egg white or one to one uh, salt to filtered egg white proportion. So in total, your students will have uh, three test tubes, one with just the water and filtered egg white and the other two with salt solution and filtered egg white. This is how we perform the experiment. We use a hot plate, a beaker, for a hot water bath and a temperature probe. To put your sample, first you have to uncap it, submerge it in the water bath, make sure you clamp it, and then you put your probe inside the solution, making sure that it doesn't touch the walls of the container. Now you turn on your hot plate. Now you can see your solution is turning from clear to cloudy. Now that we've conducted the experiment, let's look at the data. For this lesson plan, we recommend using one of two different solution conditions, either one to one salt solution to filtered egg white or just water to filtered egg white or a one to three ratio. Regardless of the conditions, what we see is that when you add salts to solution, the cloud point changes relative to the case without salt, as we've schematically diagrammed here. Upon the addition of chloride to solution, the cloud point increases upon the addition of iodide to solution, the cloud point decreases. Now let's think about why different salts have opposing effects on the cloud point. But first we need to understand what a cloud point is. At room temperature, the proteins are in a folded state. And when you heat them, they denature and unfold and then proceed to form aggregates. And this is what happens at the cloud point. Now this process is affected differently by different salts based on how a salt interacts with the surface of a protein. So at the bottom here, I've written out the Hofmeister series for anions. Ions on this side of the series are well hydrated and stabilize the folded state of the protein. Ions on this side of the series are poorly hydrated and stabilize the unfolded states of the protein. As a result, in the presence of these ions, the cloud point occurs at a lower temperature because it's easier to unfold the protein. Whereas an ion that's well hydrated helps stabilize the folded state and it costs more thermal energy to denature the protein. Specifically, well hydrated ions like chloride that are small or of high charge density are excluded from the surface of the protein. This stabilizes the folded state. However, ions that are poorly hydrated and of low charge density, like iodide, can shed their hydration shells and directly bind to the hydrated surface of the protein. And this stabilizes unfolded states and induces denaturation. So in conclusion, we've put together a detailed lesson plan to teach students about Hofmeister chemistry and intermolecular interactions between water and ions and ions and proteins. We provide teaching material for this free of charge on our website. 
where you can find a detailed lesson plan, lists of materials and procedures, and worksheets for the students to fill out. And we want to emphasize that these can be tailored to a teacher's specific classroom. Thank you for watching our video.